So I have a question. How do you turn a few frames into three hives without the traditional splitting? So I'll give you a view of what we have. Let's see, this one, new, new, and new. So how I did this, I will let you know. So yesterday we spent several hours digging that duck pond, which uh, was hot. It's end of February. Today it's like 87 degrees. My car says, uh, truck says 84 degrees. Still hot for end of February. And I am now on my way to look to see if I can do a cutout. Now what a cutout is, is when you have to physically remove the a bee colony from a structure not designed for bees. So uh, I've done several before. I've done one in a garage. I've done one underneath a shed in somebody's backyard. I've done uh, one in by somebody's garden pool in their, or garden tub in their house uh, in a tree, which was fun. Use a chainsaw and cut it open. Uh, so basically, I'm removing the colony and I'm putting them in uh, a hive or a box of my own. Uh, I have, I'm trying to use my top bar nuke that I made a few videos ago. Uh, if you haven't seen that and you're interested in top bars, uh, take a look at it. Uh, it is long, so just hopefully you enjoy it. And uh, I've got. I talked about rescue bars in that one, but I have not uh, showed you how I build my rescue bars, so here it is. There's a lot of unexpectedness when it comes to doing cutouts, so I don't know uh, what I'm getting into. I have a bunch of different tools, BVAC, uh, of course on my regular B gear, extension cord, saws, uh, it's in a brick mailbox, so I even have a uh, concrete chisel in case the owner wants to do that. Um, not sure, the owner want, really wants to save these bees, and um, you know, I'm just as a beekeeper, I'm doing this for free, right, just as a favor. Um, so, I don't know, I just, I love the fact that people care enough about bees that they, they don't just want to break them up and, and kill them. So, that's what I'm, I'm out here today doing. But, hopefully we get some cool shots. Uh, I find these cutouts really interesting. And I think it would make a cool video. So, here we go. And also, before I leave, we have the alpaca himself, Tony. Here to supervise and make sure that I'm saving the bees. So here are where the bees moved in. There's a little spot right underneath the mailbox and it was just big enough for them to be able to get in and out. So once I got the mailbox pulled out, uh, took some crowbar and some hammering, uh, you can see all the comb was attached to the bottom of that, that mailbox is basically what I'd figured would be the case. 
uh, luckily they had attached it to the walls pretty good so even with the mailbox out it was still uh, still solid in there with doing cutouts there are some things to consider uh, mainly I like to let people know that we are trying to save the colony but we're not necessarily trying to save all the bees there will be some casualties um, there's uh, a lot of baby bees in the comb and while you do save some of it you don't save all of it uh, especially as I start pulling these out I think I slow some down there's a lot of drone drone cells and drone cells are not what you want to keep especially when you're doing a cutout uh, it's a lot of as a professional beekeepers uh, that do cutouts I've heard that they won't even save hardly any of the comb. I saved just a couple with some brood in it to make the bees want to move into the box that I have sitting on top of the beehive. It kind of lets them know, like, you know, has that pheromone that says, hey, here is home. Here's where you need to start going to. So my strategy here was to get all of the comb out and then start smoking inside the mailbox. So when you do this, uh, it's kind of uncomfortable. You see how many bees are still in there because they're just fanning that smoke right back out. Um, so I'm looking in there trying to see all the bees and trying to see where I'm at. So the more you get out of there, the more bees that come out, uh, the less they're able to blow that smoke out, the more likely they are to run out. And that's exactly what we want to happen. So it takes a little while to get them to want to, to come out. So you see I'm, I'm pumping a lot of smoke in there and I'm just using oak leaves and some pine straw to get them to come out. And so once they start coming out, I'm trying to get them to go into those holes. Uh, a bigger hole would have been ideal for this cutout situation because what they'll do is they go up there and they see that there's comb in there. So you will get a few bees fanning at the entrance, but essentially what they did is they clogged up these two holes a bigger hole would have gave the other bees more room to, to get inside of it. Uh, you can see a lot of the bees are already coming out um, and kind of collecting on the top. So I'm using this bee vac, which is um, a specialized bucket <laughs> that I made where the shop vac is plugged into the bucket and uh, then I have a two, another hose coming from the bucket and another hole on top of the bucket that's green over it where I can control the suction. You do not want to have too much suction or you're just going to tear these bees apart. So that control in the shop vac where I can control that suction from the lid, it really helps me uh, kind of make it so it's not too harsh. And here was a good view with uh, all that drone comb like I'd mentioned. Uh, my knife was a casualty in this. <laughs> The, I could not reach it. I tried my best. This mailbox is hollow all the way to the ground, which let the bees build nice long comb, but it made it so it was hard to get the bees out of the bottom, and also uh, my knife is still in there. And you see that the queen ran out, and I just happened to see her, so I snagged her, and these are a few images that I'm trying to get. This took a, a few hours, but it's such a good sign. Uh, once you get the queen, you know things are looking up from here. And so all I have to do is I, I put her in the box, zip tied her to one of the top bars. And so once the bees inside the box start uh, pushing out her pheromone, all the other bees are, uh, they'll start fanning at the entrance and letting them know, hey, the queen's in here now and they'll move in. And then I'm just trying to clean up everything with the uh, bee vac. So I still had a bucket of bees at home and the hive to deal with, but I got that picture from the neighbor that called me about this. So this, that picture was from the next morning after I already did the cutout. So my goal was to get back, deal with the hive that I, uh, that box, that nuke box that was on top of the mailbox the day before, and the bucket of bees. There's just so many bees that I'd gotten out. So the trick to getting the bees to stay whenever you do a cutout or even catch a swarm is to find, a, use some comb from your existing hives and put it in there uh, young, with young larvae and eggs. 
that way it just kind of makes the bees feel like, hey, there's something here to guard, there's something here to protect. And uh, the queen, if there's any empty spots, you can start laying and that'll really kind of make those bees stay. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to find these, uh, a, a few bars that have eggs and larva. One, that nuke box uh, just to my left that you see the bees flying on top of, that is the one from the cutout the day before. So you'll see me put one comb in here. Um, that bee box to the left is also where the queen was that I captured. So I figured by the time I put a frame of uh, brood and eggs and have the queen in there, they'll uh, probably have a good chance of staying. The queen I'll keep caged for a few days until I feel comfortable. Um, I also fed them that, that morning and kind of locked them back up and opened the entrance. So the entrance was okay to open up. I don't feel like they're gonna swarm away because the queen is stuck in that queen cage. Uh, if there's no queen cage, I would not open that for a few days to kind of let them establish, uh, start building some wax and kind of establish a home before I open it up. So here you see I'm still looking, kind of seeing what I got. I kind of, uh, I decided that that one frame will do for that box. So I'm putting it right beside where the queen was uh, zip tied to, right beside that frame. And the convenient thing is all of mine are built the same size. So I just pop it straight in there, kind of press it down and I'm good to go. And that's why I like building all of my top bars and those nukes that I built all the same size. So I have a bucket full of bees also. Uh, so that hive all the way on the left is full of bees. And I also have a bucket full of bees because there are so many. So I'm this other hive, I'm pulling out a few bars and trying again to get uh, larva and eggs. And I'm going to actually start a, all a brand new top bar with a bucket full of bees plus a few uh, combs already existing. I'm not too concerned with mixing bees from one hive to the other because it's a strong nectar flow right now and the bees, when they won't fight each other. Now, if it was in a dearth season, uh, then they would probably not get along if you're mixing bees from different hives. If you watch my split video from last week, this is one of the new bars. So I'm gonna show you, this is what they built in a week. There's already eggs and there's larvae in here. Uh, so, I'm gonna use this one and I'm gonna put that into the new hive. So here's me dumping the bees in, uh, the first bucket of bees from the, the night before. And I got an additional uh, Langstroth eight frame hive ready. All right, so this is day two at the mailbox. <laughs> so it was hard to tell if these are residual bees from the cutout the day before or if it's uh, a new swarm that had moved in. I was uh, surprised by how many bees that were in there. And you'll see me in a second, I stick the, there's still a giant cluster of bees inside the, the mailbox. That's when I just stuck it in there probably four to five inches. And I just basically made a hole in the bees. And so it showed me that there's four to five inches of solid bees hanging from that top. So I'm just trying to vacuum them all up, trying to make less flying around. Um, this is during the day and there's people walking by. Uh, the neighborhood was generally curious the day before and they all stopped by and were asking questions. And the, uh, our friend that we know that lives across the street was you know, talking to them and kind of letting them know uh, what was going on. And it was kind of cool to see the whole guy, neighborhood interested in this. So this is after I shop backed out. I still had a cluster of bees at the top. So got them out and uh, you'll see me dump those in in a minute. This is that Langstroth hive that I said I had ready. This has a one gallon feeder inside of it, which is convenient with, uh, and here's two frames of eggs and larva that I pulled from uh, one of the hives that I did not split last week. And so I'm about to open the bucket. I'm gonna strengthen this hive up a little bit more and I'm gonna put a bunch in that. You can see there's a lot of bees in there and this is just from the second day what I just shot backed up. So lots of bees and so I'm gonna cover them up 
Um, you'll see bees flying around, but they'll eventually find a home. There's several beehives, and like I said, it's okay if they interchange the hives uh, at this time of year. Um, so I'm just closing everything back up. And if it was a swarm and there's a queen in it, then I'm still okay with that because that means they won't have to make a new queen. And I'll be able to find that out in a week or so if I see fresh eggs laid. Uh, if they were just residual bees from the day before, they'll be able to make a new queen with the uh, frames that I gave them. So that's how I have three beehives out of that one cutout. So I, these two plus that one earlier that I showed you on the left. So I thought that was pretty amazing. Uh, you know, there's a chance that none of these will live. There's a chance that all of these will live. Either way, it was a really great experience. So, they're complaining. They're very no noisy. Still have a half dug pond. That will be, should be, next video. Uh, any other really good things come along that impact that, well, you'll see another cool video. Uh, I would ask if these videos are good, if they're decent, mediocre, uh, subscribe. So, buttons down here somewhere. Uh, still getting used to the finger thing. Also, uh, ring the bell, the little bell thing. Uh, just found out not too long ago. That makes it so if, uh, if, I, if you subscribe and I put it on more videos, you'll get a notification. And also, if you have any questions, if you have anything uh, you'd like me to know, anything that can help me out, um, just put them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. So uh, I'd really thank you guys for watching all these videos and coming along with me. Uh, it's, it's slow going, but uh, it's a fun process. So. All right. Thanks, guys. Love y'all. I'll see you next time.